say it's re it's recording now and um, I'm just going to share a screen with you and um, just just to remind ourselves of our, our first meeting and uh, so uh, you've had the removal of bone plates and screws and bone grass and local neurolysis and local debridement uh, indication for surgery. Now, um, so Lafort and Mandible this way. Okay, so it's a quite, a, quite a big procedure. And today's for our O and O. I'm just going to share this screen here. Just looking at, um, it, it, it's this has been taken since we've taken out the plate. And uh, there's definitely no plate upstairs. And and uh, you can see the holes left behind uh, from from the previous. Uh, the, the, these are nerve canals, and um, I think we couldn't get those screws out, or maybe we we did. Uh, that's just little bone spicules. Wow, you got really tiny airways, haven't you? And um, okay, all right. What we've got here is <coughs> your lower jaw, and um, and you can see it's uh, it's quite uh, I suppose asymmetrical. Now, this is not a commentary on how you've become asymmetrical. It's more just a comment that you are asymmetrical. And, um, and so this becomes, uh, you could see a, a, a median line and it go, well and truly goes through um, the base of your skull. You can see how evenly it does through there and it comes through the foramen magnum, both front and back and it evenly goes up the back of your skull um, quite nicely. So when we look at it um, on the right, you can sort of see uh, the origin of this is slightly off, but generally it's quite symmetrical and we can see the asymmetry of the jaw angles and of the bite itself. So it's a little bit higher on the left, on your left uh, compared to your right. Um, we orient uh, your face, so if we put this uh, grid pattern here, you can see just level it is in terms of uh, what we call the orbital floors and the zygomatic frontal sutures here. Um, the midline is right down the center of your nose, not quite through the spine of your nose, and, and it's not on the center of your dental midline here either. So um, so these are, these are features of it. There's a little bit of um, deficiency here uh, in the bone uh, on the on the left side. A tiny amount of deficiency here, uh, as such. A little bit more back here. Um, now, when you had the scan taken, uh, your mouth was open. Uh, that's not a problem. I, I prefer that it, it's just a little bit open anyway, um, because it allows me to uh, adjust these condyles quite well, and we can uh, try to get an equilibrium point with your with your jaw joints. It, taking the plates away also gives us um, uh, or takes away any reflection uh, that the plates may or may not have had. I'm uh, going to have a look at a few structures here. Uh, the first is to, to have a look at your airway. And um, this, is, uh, this is a very, very narrow airway here. Uh, there's a hyoid bone that sort of sits uh, here like so. And we have uh, where it's sort of a measurement of a muscle. It's about 36 millimeters from behind your chin to the hyoid. Um, that muscle helps pull this structure up to open this airway. Now, whilst you were lying on your back, you, you had your head well and truly back to try to, um, so you could sort of see the, the, the bend of your spine, uh, to try to open up that airway as much as you can. You even opened your mouth um, there to, to help with um, uh, opening that airway as well. And despite all those measurements, uh, all those, those actions, it, it's quite a narrow airway and I would I would say it would uh, easily lead to collapse at night and the uh, problems that you've uh, complained about with sleep apnea. Is, is, that, is that true? Yeah, so I never sleep on my You never sleep on your yeah, never sleep on your so, um, we also have uh, your face, uh, so can look at your face. And you're certainly quite jowly uh, around the neck. Um, this is more your tongue that's pushing this down, but you, you've got a little bit of subcutaneous fat there. And when you're, you're looking straight ahead, um, it would be in that orientation. So it would be nice to, to be able to advance this structure in order to stretch out this tissue. 
but also to, to open up your airway so that hopefully you're able to sleep on your back at night. It's no guarantee that we can obviously relieve you completely of sleep apnea, but, but we do know that by advancing the jaw forward, it does pull your tongue forward to open and tent open the, um, the airway. Now, our complicating issue is that you've already had jaw surgery uh, in the past, and what we're trying to do is, um, you know, both uh, uh, correct maybe some of the residual um, issues related to that, as well as to improve upon it um, by advancing mandible as far forward as we can and try to get as much tissue stretch as we can. Uh, if we look at this scan here, uh, you can see uh, this tissue, which is the flabbiness underneath um, your jaw, but there's a muscle there that's uh, trying to pull uh, this the, that hyoid bone forward. and. It's, it's somewhat contracted. Now you can see the bunching up of it. You can see how it's all bunched up here uh, in this attempt to, to come forward. The original osteotomy went through this part of the muscle. It, it didn't have any effect on the superior part of the muscle. And you can see it's still there. So we'll be trying, this is the bulk of the muscle here. You can sort of see its outline and we're trying to pull it as far forward as we can. I'd like to also pull your upper jaw forward. This will pull the soft palate forward and open up the airway behind behind your uvula. So you're probably um, snoring at two points. You're snoring here and here, and it's this structure here that's causing a, a sound, and it sounds like this, like that, and this sound would be that uh, that sound of the obstruction of the of the tongue when this muscle relaxes and closes off that airway. So uh, I'll take away the, the face mask uh, as it were, and I'm just going to take away these other structures, completed uh, the analysis of those. I'm also going to, um, uh, well, just before I do that, I, I just want to comment uh, on the asymmetry of you know, your lower jaw. And uh, you can see it's a lot fuller on this side. It's a lot less full on this side. Um, and lower jaw is up here and it's certainly down here. Uh, it's down here and it's up here and it's off center. So we'll try to symmetrify this as much as we possibly can, if, you, if you'll let me. And um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just take away um, the lower jaw uh, like that. And I'm just gonna take off this grid here. Going to um, take, uh, this is called the Lafort line uh, and we'll be operating dominantly um, where you've already had the surgery. And, um, and so the first thing I do is I just uh, move it uh, in incremental bits to, to the right so we can count them. So what I want to do is um, um, move uh, your center dental midline uh, to, to the center. One, two, that's half a mil, that's one mil, and that's one and a quarter millimeters. And now you, you see that the, the, the midline is, is dead on. Um, You'll also see that the nasal spine is now uh, a bit more in the center. And um, so, uh, but, but this side is obviously up. So I'm just going to put a rotation point just here and I'm just going to roll it a, a little bit. So it, it becomes more level uh, as it were, assuming this side to be as, as um, the normal side and this to be the abnormal. So um, just or one degree, two degrees, three degrees. And you can start to see that it's now becoming a little bit more level and symmetrical. Uh, I don't think I need to go more than three degrees. You can see now that it's, um, it, it can, um, it's not quite down. Um, so, um, so I just uh, move it forward a bit and down. And I'm just gonna rotate it down a little bit. I'm just going to hide uh, this bigger structure. So, so now what we're seeing is that uh, the left side is collapsed inwards a little bit. And um, so what I do is um, just uh, measure this to this line here. So it's 25.1 and that's 22.8, <coughs> 15.9, 16.9. So what I do now is I just rotate this out like so, and um, and I probably rotate this side in a little bit. So I'm just rotating this in. Just take these measurements away. 
and we'll just measure these uh, points again 20.8 20 20.9 20 25.6 26.7 so it's still a little bit out here so we can sort of flick this out a bit more 29.7 29.9 so on average we feel very comfortable with just flicking this out and it's a bit more now we're starting to get a very symmetrical um, upper jaw not quite there yet and so you're starting to see it getting quite symmetrical it's an even symmetry of bite D does that make sense Perfect. and um i'll just take these measurements away again so they don't confuse me and then i'll put back the um calvarium and 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 now you've got a symmetrical upper jaw which is down the center of your face and it's um it's a it's a nice wide arch i've opened up the back of your airway a little bit there and it's level and um just so that you can relate to where it used to be or where it is now really um that's where you are now and um, and that's uh, that's that's where I expect the levelness to to ultimately go yeah I, I think you mentioned bringing it forward as well Is that yeah that yeah that's right that's right so um, so we look at it now from the right I feel I could um, just drop it a little bit at the back uh, probably best just to bring it down a little bit so everything's level except uh, I'll bring it down again yeah so now it's level it's just that one tooth is a little bit high on that side yeah um, so so how how do I now uh, advance it a little bit um, so I'm just going to put a rotation point here and I'm just going to rotate it in this counterclockwise direction I'm, I'm just dropping the back down a little bit and and you can see that it's retreated a little bit here it's, it's come back so I'm just going to advance it to where it needs to be, which is there. And so by a simple act of just opening it at the back, in effect, uh, this front tooth is almost touching that line. But I'd like to just bring it one millimeter forward, further forward. And, um, and I'll probably just bring it up just that that distance so um so it's it's really just tweaking it but it, it, it is significantly advancing it uh, and i'll show you what i mean by that i look at it from below so i brought it forward now i've widened it i've symmetrified it i brought it in the center line but what i'd like to show you is um what uh it's going to just change this color to something a little I'll make it blue and uh, just just show you where this maxilla is now so you can see that i've actually um looking at it the, the blue is where you are currently um so I've, I've i've subtly advanced it in that direction and it doesn't appear to be a big distance so um i'd probably be happier if i just brought it forward further forward so it's only um sorry uh, 3.6 millimeters so it, it's it's not a big distance so um it wouldn't be enough to overcome snoring uh, for you so um, once I've done all the other adjustments uh, I'll be looking to see how much further forward I can I can bring the, the upper jaw um, for you so the, the, the next step is is really um, now uh, having just placed it in a, in a very nice position uh, is now to bring back the the lower jaw it certainly has created quite a, a degree of an overbite now. So you can sort of see uh, the degree of overbite that, that, that we would be playing with. So what I'm gonna do is um, now take your, your lower jaw uh, like so, and now I'm gonna advance it. So we, <clears throat> we're just gonna bring it to this line and you can sort of see it's come forward eight millimeters here. <clears throat> but um, what I wanna do is now just bring this center line so it's, it's more in keeping with your upper midline and you can sort of see now um, just how unlevel the, the lower jaw is and you can sort of uh, intimate just um, how uh, more this talks in and this is more upright so I'm just going to twist it a little bit like this like that and um, and then I'm just going to take this right side and I've split uh, your lower jaw uh, and you can see I just split it here and now I'm just going to rotate it out a little bit and just down at the back like so I'm not absolutely convinced I think this is over twisted here so I'm just going to rotate this in that and look at it from the right you can start to see I'm leveling it and starting to get it pretty even so it's becoming it's becoming a lot more symmetrical 
I'm just going to just drop the back down a little bit and now I'm just going to lift it up. Now you remember I said this tooth is a little bit high. Um, I don't want to try to get them that tooth necessarily biting because I'm pretty much getting these teeth uh, biting quite nicely into each other, which is which, which is nice actually, where I get to really tweak. We're getting there, aren't we? It would take to think how long it took you to learn how to use the software. <laughs> it took me a couple of hours, to be honest. It wasn't. It's not that hard. I know uh, I, I do surprise engineers because they four year degrees to figure it out, but it, it's, it's not that hard. I'm going to be struggling getting a bite here actually, to be honest, um, because this tooth here in particular is biting high, you can see. I'm going to get around this. I'm getting a really nice bite on this side, but this, this side is playing havoc with my brain. So you can see um, I'm struggling to get all your teeth in um, because this, this tooth is, um, you can see it's just, just touching now, just touching there, but it means that none of your other teeth touch. And you can see you've got a, a, a great big filling or here or something. Really the only solution is to um, get a crown built on that tooth and allow all the other teeth to naturally settle in. Does that make sense? And so there's a bit of dentistry that would follow on from this. So we, we're almost, uh, I'm just going to hide the upper jaw because I, I don't want to leave too significant a step here um, of your lower front teeth. You can see I've, I've left a, a quite a significant step. So um, rather than have that, um, I'm just trying to imagine what I can do. Yeah, I don't think I can do this movement. Um, be with me for a second. I'm just going to play around with this, calculate a few things. That step's okay, winds that a little bit, gives a bit more of a symmetrical jawline here. The thing is, I, I can I can really almost get a, a pretty good bite here. Um, so what I've done is I've just taken this slightly off centre and I'm still able to maintain a pretty good bite here and I'm getting a bit more evenness here and I've got a little bit more wiggle room here. But that that's as good as I can get your bite, really. Does that make sense? Um, it, it's quite a it's quite hard to get it better than that. It, it, it's that a significant improvement of what you've got, but it, it's I can't get it better than that. What does that mean from a day to day perspective? It just means when I bite. Well, you you'll be biting on you you'll be biting on your front teeth until such time that your back teeth start to erupt towards each other, or your um or you get you know orthodontics, or you get crown buildups of of your teeth if, if that makes sense yeah okay. obviously we're not doing the surgery with preemptive orthodontics but but almost certainly you'd need post-operative orthodontics to to really help settle everything into place and in fact um i'm tempted actually just to play around a little bit more with this side and just flip you see it's a lot fuller in this body here than this body so i'm just going to what's that uh, post-surgery orthodontics with the invisalign or yeah with with invisalign, yeah. invisalign yeah. i think that was the worst part about the first surgery was the, the teams of braces beforehand yeah I, I i don't think it did much of a service but that that that's as close a bite as i can get does that make sense yeah. so you, yep. you can see now it's a lot more even <clears throat> and i've flared out this part of the jawbone which which matches the the fullness of this side and the canines are roughly at the same orientations the upper canines are at the same orientations and it, it's fairly level um, on on your jaw now what I want to do now is just correct the orientation of um, of these uh, jaw joints so you can see that this is a lot further forward on this side uh, compared to this side. Um, so we're just going to adjust the, the jaw joint a little bit. It's why I got you to open your jaw a little bit in it. So um, so I'm just going to swing it backwards a little bit like that. And it's, it's a little bit unfortunate because um, it'd be nice to get a bit more flaring. Let's see if we can. And then uh, we're just going to rotate it in. And so it becomes quite a, a big bridge, as it were, to, to heal. Um, so we have to design a very big plate for this. With the original surgery, it, it has reduced the height here a little bit rather than so much here. Uh, regardless, um, uh, when, when we do the engineering again, I might bring this a little bit further back to about that point. But at the end of the day, um, trying to get as much grip 
on this bone and as much grip here um, trying to put artificial bone in here hopefully to create new bone but you, you it's it's quite a big distance um, that distance there um, I might just so by, by stretching it out here, I'm also stretching out your airway, tenting it out. But now the challenge is to, to see what we do with this side. I'm just going to make it reasonably symmetrical. And you can see it's a, it's a massive distance on this side. And you can see the discrepancy in the height um, that, that I'm magnifying now a little bit. That's quite a discrepancy, I, I could tell you. Um, you, you must have crushed the jaw joint at some point in the past on this side. Um, you can see this bit of bone here. I've, I've actually got to infracture it so I can actually approximate it. So you, you can start to see I, I'm getting quite a symmetrical jawline here. It's symmetrical from here to here as well. And I can measure measure that 48.5, 49.4. So it, it, it's it's a millimeter difference. Um, and then the final bit of the puzzle is the, is the chin. And you can see it's a, it's significantly um, asymmetrical. So so I just tuck this in. This will roll out. It's 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 almost a double chin because of the previous um, um, genioplasty that you had. I just uh, drop it here. So um, so I, I I am creating a bit of a button here uh, in order to really try to stretch as much as I can. But I haven't really stretched it that much. Um, it's more that I'm using it to make it symmetrical across the face here as I've tried to you know widen across the bottom. So I, I've widened across the, the bottom here and across the back and I've just made that symmetrical. So. Um, the, the best way to understand what I've done is to really just compare it to the original lower jaw. Let's try to find where it is. So, so you can sort of see where your lower jaw is now, and you can see how I've widened it more substantially on the left side than, than the right, and how I've uh, symmetrified it and brought it into the center of your face. Does that make sense? It, it looks like it's forward, or is that just the angle with it? Uh, no, no, it's, it's moved forward quite a lot. So if, if you agree that point there is that point there, so it's moved 20 millimeters further forward. A lot, right? Well, you do it every day. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the <clears throat> now um, the, the risk, the risk is because this distance is such a big distance, uh, the risk is that it never heals. And you can see all these defects left from the original jaw surgery. And the only thing we can do is over engineer the plates and then graft around the plates. They're not, you know, sometimes these plates uh, are not strong enough to hold these distances. And we can't do much about it um, because at the end of the day, you know, how, how strong is, is titanium? Well, it's, it's very strong. I've seen them break and I've seen screws pull out and I've seen the bone itself where we're reoperating on it you know it, it just says it's tired of life and doesn't want to heal as well and that's also complicated by your age yeah um so i'm not in a position to give any you know reassurances or guarantees here um apart from to say that this is quite a big operation we certainly perform it quite frequently you can see now that your lower jaw is is, is level but you need to have invisalign to really straighten the teeth up uh, but it's well and truly now in the center of your face does that make sense it does probably throw me a little bit with the risk of I'm sure that there's risk with every surgery. Um, I'm saying... I'm saying that the surgery without the custom titanium is impossible anyway. Um, you're maximising your chance with custom titanium to have it work, but it, you're, you're, you're already a, a very complicated individual. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And you can start to see the deficiencies in the jaw bone, especially on this side. You can see it's not as full here. It's, that's your original bone or it's an effect of the original surgery. Um, I can't determine which and there's quite a gap here and I'd have to plug it with as much bone as I could um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much relying upon the technology um, I, I have moved your jaw joints uh, a little bit there too um, I haven't quite adjusted them yet uh, I think I prefer to adjust them now um, and because I'm moving the jaw joints so significantly too um, I, I have to move this back to where where it um, uh, so that's actually where your jaw joint should be sitting. So it's, it's, it's nicely sitting there. So I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to get a get a gauge for symmetry here. Uh, <clears throat> your jaw joint positions were uh, they're, they're not in a very comfortable place. 
this this jaw joint it's quite a good jaw joint it's not obviously touching on any bits of bone in there it's nicely sitting but your left uh, your left jaw joint you must have injured it when you're um, a child uh, because it's it's significantly um, smaller compared to your um, your right side so it's like you've got a crushed knuckle on it I broke it as a teenager, I think. What's that? I, I broke it playing footy as a teenager. And back then, they just literally wired my jaw together with rubber, uh, like rubber bands or wire. I think it was literal wire sticking out that they wrapped around my teeth. Yeah, well, I, I suspect you're, you're absolutely right there. And um, it didn't do you any favours. <laughs> it's in regional Queensland, different to Sydney medical options, I mean. I do that. So everything I do, it just exemplifies the shortness of this jaw and um and it increases this this length to a point where you know it's probably not going to um be a happy medium so you, you remember i said once i've done all of this i can see how much further forward i can advance everything the answer's none. what's that the answer's none. Um, is that right oh no a little bit but it's not it's not um so i'm just going to retreat the whole thing backwards just a little bit so just just retreat it back a little bit and you can see when i when i do that it accentuates that bit of bone and i've still got I have to reduce this distance a little bit, uh, which just accentuates the, um, the, the, the the height difference that you've got there from the original injury to your jaw joint. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get as as wide as I can, but it's not giving me extra height. But but I'm getting a, a bigger a smaller distance here, which which means that the plate has less load to carry. You know, it has a greater chance of surviving without breaking. And um, I'm still getting a nice wide jaw, and it's nice symmetrical, but it's the angle is not going to be as uh, you, you can see it's, it's symmetrical and it's symmetrical now um, and I'm working within parameters that will allow it to maximally have a good chance of working. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, that sounds rational for me. <laughs> and and you're still getting quite a significant mandible change. I, I just you, you could see you could see it's still roughly 20 millimeters. I, well, maybe no, maybe maybe now it's a, it's a bit shorter. No, 20 millimeters, right? Sorry, I've just got this. But but I'm I'm significantly symmetrifying it. You, you could see how much I'm symmetrifying it by by swinging this side out, and I'm swinging this side out. And so what distance now that the titanium is going to hold? 16 millimeters. It's still a very big advancement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, 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 still, it's still very big. The, um, the, the, where the titanium plate's holding, yeah. what's that distance now? Are you, like you said you think you're better, but I'm interested if you... Uh, yeah, the it's so, so... So the gap... Um, is effectively looking at it not from below which is the biggest one and not from above which is the shortest pretty much the, the biggest distance that i could find there which is just over 11 mils and that that's that's quite a big distance to jump but from the, have you seen yeah. titanium not handle that um i've seen titanium break and i've seen screws pull out yeah and what happens in that situation like what? uh well we just reprint the titanium and put it back on no, oh, okay. okay. So when you say the risk, it's the risk of having to maybe do a follow-up surgery or something like that. Not yeah, to, yeah, to walk for yeah. life. No, no, but but it, it, there's quite a lot of engineering involved. It's it's just being prepared for it and knowing just what effort we're putting into it to to over-engineer it. But really. There's quite a significant bone deficiency here, right, just there, and there's a significant bone deficiency here, which which ultimately, um, you know, if if we're going to um, if if we don't feel it has enough of a bone bridge here to to be stable, um, we we have to consider putting a huge titanium uh, implant, which grips both sides and and totally reconstructs it. We can't use these titanium implants in the BSSO. Uh, they're, they're not designed to to be able to do that. Um, so. So you may be looking at further operations just to give you back the contour and the strength or stability. Does that make sense? But you wouldn't know that. Well, you. Well, uh, well, we we don't know anything uh, of the future. We just know what we can do now, which is which is that, and and it really really showcases the the height discrepancy on this side because of the, the original deformity or injury that you had to the um, the jaw joint on that side. So what we could do, what we're looking. 
it, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is just a preliminary plan because now I've done all the movements, I could say, well, you know, I can go back a step and bring this osteotomy more at this angle here so I don't get as much of a step here. And what else? Uh, and I, I have to osteotomize this because it's clearly not going to like being on this side of the blue. It has to be on that side of the blue. Um, so there's a couple of little tweaks that I'm going to be doing with the um, with the engineering and we'll be designing this osteotomy a little bit better so it's going through here rather than above this line. Um, it looks like you've got a little bit of sinus disease there too so at the time of surgery I, I have a look at what's going on but I'll, I'll be putting in lots of bone it looks like I have to put in lots of bone at the time of surgery as well uh, to, to try to try to get new bone growing. Yeah, what's next, Steph? Um, okay, uh, well, I'll, I'll just save that for a sec um, and I'll stop the share. Ask away. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, you know, you did break me just a little bit during that, but, but I think we got back on track with the risks are uh, maybe breaks and we just have to reoperate. It's inconvenient, but it's not life ending or, or that. So that's good. So about 40,000 doesn't include removing afterwards. And that's at my discretion. Is that right? Because so, I don't think I, I would. Um, we, we recommend removing them because if they do break, they're, they're almost impossible to remove after a certain period of time. But, but, but we really want to make sure that, you know, it's going to be as much as healed as possible. And I yeah. can't sort of make a judgment of recommendation this far away from it. Um, and it would normally be six months after, is that right? Uh, well, in your case, it might be 12 months. Or, or, or eight or ten months but, but it's not six not not for the lower jaw um, for the upper we, we try to divide it because we want to give out all our attention just to one area every time we operate although the the double jaw surgery necessarily means that we've got to do that at the same time upper and lower jaw but um, uh, but but when we take the plates out we, we're grafting and doing various things to each jaw so would I be right in saying if we do it, then you're going to send it off to Belgium? Sorry, I, 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 I can't hear you. Uh, oh. just, uh, when, when, you, when you're looking down, you're, you're not facing ah. the microphone. Can you hear me now? Is that okay now? 40,000, um, we're going, if we say yes, let's go ahead, you're going to send it off to Belgium and get all engineered and everything. We book it in for Newcastle, how long in hospital and then recovery after hospital? Uh, it, it, it's around about uh, four, three to four nights in hospital straight yeah. after surgery and and then you, it's about two weeks out of your life but you're not allowed you are not allowed to chew anything for about three months yep. yeah. even so then it, it it will be what we tell you um it yeah. may be longer and will it be physically wired or i'm just not allowed it may be that you're elasticized together just to just to take the pressure off the plates or screws whilst they're settling Yes. Uh, but but not wired, and I've only ever wired one person in my career since right. since okay. since becoming a specialist. Basically, liquid diet for the twelve weeks. What about um so elasticized being able to talk normally at work? Right, how, how long off work do you think? Or... About two weeks. And then I'll be able to talk with the elastics. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Most most people are able to talk with their elastics. But no. And occasionally, okay, there's a little bit of give in the elastics, but. People get into the habit of pulling against the elastics, which yeah. at the act of opening is as bad as the act of trying to chew. Um, so we ask you to resist both movements, but um, but you can take off the elastics. It's just there to remind you just to keep your teeth filled. <laughs> it's not meant to. Uh, it, it's, it's just taking a bit of load off off the screws and, and, and as as everything's healing. How long with the elastics? Sorry, I, I got mixed up between six and twelve. Okay, it, uh, the, the longest I've had elastics on is for about a year. And that, that was in a person where the plates literally broke, um, but he'd already he'd had four operations before he came to me and he had a pencil thin mandible and the, the way the bone had set had put too much weight on the plates and, and they actually fractured on both sides. And, um, um, and it led to a, you know, a massive re-evaluation re, uh, uh, of the entire system uh, in Switzerland and Belgium and here. Wow. 
So, so the engineering, you know, is always, we're looking for failures because we, you know, it's like a plane falling out of the sky. It's a rare event, but when it happens, it's, a, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's thoroughly investigated. Um, it's from it. Yeah, okay. Um, so three or four nights in hospital, two weeks, definitely off work. I'll probably, I've got long service leave, so I'll probably take longer just to, just to heal and, and all of that. Um, and then we would see how it all healed. And then, um, then we would be in a position to understand one, plates that went in can come out and the bone can support it on its own, or two, that specific titanium option for the left, if that was required or, or desirable cost. Cost of that, I'd be like, approximate or sort of. Oh, it, it, it's all in the financial cost. Oh, it is. Okay. But, yeah, but that, that conversation has to go behind the scenes a little bit um, with, with the the other support management staff only because um, I, I want to maintain the, the purity of the clinical relationship between us, that's all. Invisalign after, after, oh, when would Invisalign? Uh, around about three to four months after surgery. So your bite's going to be out for, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's obviously very different to what it will be now. Um, and, and think of that bite change in different ways. They might say, oh, my teeth don't meet on one side or whatever, but, but you can see the way that they're sitting. It, it's the, the curve of them and the, the, their uprightness that, that's all higgledy piggledy. And so by getting as much oriented and even and symmetrical as possible, it makes the orthodontics easier to execute. You know, uh, again, it's a titrated event. We, we, we have to guide you, but you can't walk away without the expectation of some significant dentistry by dentists following on from this. And, and that, of course, you know, if they communicate with me, uh, I'm more than happy to, to share um, whatever. This video will be on online for you to, to view. Um, um, so as to remind yourself of all the, the issues and difficulties. Um, and then I guess um, probably the question so if I said, yeah, what would be the time frame? Well, you, have to, you have to sign those consents. Yep. You're yep. more than happy to come back and talk to me you know, if, you, if you have any questions. And, and if you feel that, you know, you don't want me to treat you, you know, you're more than welcome to get a, another opinion or process. The moment that you're happy with everything, you signed off, whatever, when you pay, uh, we have to initiate a, a significantly expensive process, which involves the manufacturers and engineers in order to prepare all the custom titanium so it's available for you at the time of the operation. And they only get reimbursed when you have the operation. Makes sense, yeah. right? So um, uh, so they do not want to embark on this unless you've given some commitment to surgery, which is essentially you've paid for surgery. Yeah, yeah, no, so let's say I, I signed and paid tomorrow. What, yeah. what so if you did it, if you did it tomorrow, that, well, not tomorrow, but the scans would be uploaded. From that point, five weeks is the minimum okay. time that you can accommodate. You can get, get out to about six or seven or eight weeks, but not less than five. Okay, so if I was thinking September, that might work as long as you had availability. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Okay, I, I'm just, I've just got four kids and, and a wife. Well, I'll, I'll feed all this information back into you and try and work out. I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when, when, when's the best time for the recovery period, basically? That's yeah. what I'm trying to um, As I say, it's, it's around about two weeks out of your life. And we're, we're trying to, you know, I'm trying to maximize that stretch, but not so far that, you know, the engineering can't cope. Ultimately, it's a guess based on experience as to where those limits and limitations are. You know, and if you ask the next bloke, the, the, everyone's going to have a different opinion. I suppose the person who wins is the, the one that's got the most experience with it. Oh, no, I'm pretty, look, I'm very comfortable. I'm in safe hands with you. And um, so, yeah, I'm, it's not that. I'm purely trying to figure out my own timing and, and family and all of that. But you just said something that made me think of the question. Um, oh, um, you mentioned that extreme case where the guy had surgeries and, and paper thin, but you don't, but I'm nowhere near that sort of risk category. Am I? I mean, I, I have had pre-surgery. I, I will tell you now, yes. each and every person that's already had a Bimax, the one unknown variable that I cannot control for is what did they do in that operation? You know, I, I, I just can't predict it. And I can't predict what happened afterwards. And, and from your own memory of it, you, it will be fairly vague. And we don't have any record of theirs to be able to give reference to, to know what they eat. So in effect, I'm jumping blind into something. Whereas if I've got a different set of 
people, which is people who have never had an operation, then they're titrated into two different groups. They're, they're older people with diseases and medical problems, which complicate surgery. And then there's the younger patient, which is, is free of all vice. And um, and on, on both those groups, we take the plates out and, and I can directly see how well it heals and, and then compare them between age groups as well as within age groups. That's a very different set to this, you know, the, the repeat surgical operation, but that doesn't take away the necessity for it because these people are having it for, for valid functional reasons. So in reality, we've just got to say, oh, okay, well, we've got additional risks here. How, how best do we manage it? And it's really just to sort of say, well, look, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> For whatever. whatever, you know, I've got an a very big experience set with this, um, but it's not as big as this one, obviously, but you know, I'm privileged to be able to do it, you know, without criticizing how others have done it. I'm, pr I'm privileged that I'm able to, you know, look at this and, and, and repeat whatever, but, but we see they don't heal as well, but then they are older patients. Both groups don't heal that well. Uh, they're, they're, they're harder to operate on because we're operating in, in scarred bone as opposed to fresh bone. They're difficult because often the condition that has led to the surgery, which is also leading to the repeat surgery, is usually quite profound. It's, it, 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 it tends to be on the extreme edge. And the, the benefit of custom titanium is is that we're modifying the system and does you know using its templates to, to titrate it down to the individual's needs and and then over a big spectrum we're always looking to improve the overall system so, <laughs> it's, it's as good as it gets <laughs> no, I'm excited um, all right I'll, I'll, yeah we'll, we'll, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead but it's just a matter of when so um, uh, I'll figure that out with the family this week yeah but thank you for going through everything um and so once i do that will i send everything off to belgium like i pay and everything um yeah no so what would be the next the very next step then after paid and that you send everything would i do i then meet with you and the engineer is that right or... yeah yeah so I, I i pretty much ring you up <laughs> yeah okay I five minutes before it starts and so yep. because um people forget to include you but if you're not there obviously i i know you're not there so i've, I've got your phone in my system yes you do yep yeah, yeah, right. it's in your phone as well yep okay all right uh, yep. that's good all right Perfect. you've got my phone there too so you know yep. it's, it's available to you okay thank you i appreciate it that's okay um, we'll talk soon. thank you bye-bye